What's going on, Internet? Tony with Fast Intentions. I'm standing here with our 2021 Bronco Badland Sasquatch. Uh, today is an exciting day. We're going to be doing initial impressions part one of our 2021 Bronco. It's going to be an ongoing series. We're going to give the uh, Internet, you guys and girls, some feedback on what we think of the vehicle and an ongoing process moving forward. So without further ado, let's get after it. So quick overview of the outside. Uh, obviously, as you can tell, we've removed the top. Now we bought a soft top version. Uh, as a lot of people may or may not know, the 2021s were heavily delayed due to um, supply issues, delamination issues, what have, what have you issues with the hard top. So we actually had a switch to a soft top. Our initial order was a soft top, or hard top rather. Um, top's not here. You know, we removed it. Not really a fan of it, to be honest. Truth, truth be told, um, it doesn't look great. Not a fan of the plastic windows on the sides or the back. I think that's a general consensus with the team. Um, it's nice to be able to put the top down at will. I know that functionality of it is easier than the hard top. So I got to put one in the check column for the soft top there. Um, I have been told that it is lighter and easier to remove than the hard top, which we have completely removed it from the vehicle. It took about 10 minutes and there's going to be an independent review coming up on how to DIY the soft top of the 2021 Bronco. That'll be coming out shortly. So easier to remove, uh, probably weighs somewhere between 75 and 95 pounds if I had to venture to guess. And that's just, you know, the weight test without actually weighing it. it does take two people minimum to do it properly, uh, as well as towels without scratching it and whatnot. And then you need to store it away. Thing looks amazing with the top off. Um, this is how, honestly, I would probably drive it 95% of the time in California because as we all know, it never rains here. So let's do a quick walk around. I'd like to show you the outside. You know, it's rapid red, uh, beautiful color, beautiful metallic, uh, the flake in the paint. I just think, you know, pictures don't do it any justice. I think it really does pop beautiful in the light. Um, love how there is a graphite gun metallic on the grill, on the exterior of the grill. Uh, Love how they put little Easter eggs in where you can see the Bronco horse in the headlights as well as many other places. And, you know, as a lot of you may or may not already know, wherever you see the word Bronco on the star tip torque style bolts, uh, that is an accessory mounting point. This thing was made to essentially modify, uh, which is really cool. You know, it's uh, accessory ready. Wiring is run to a plethora of different places where you can put light mounts, uh, aftermarket bumpers with lights, winches, the list goes on and on. Uh, tow hooks that are obviously ready for D-ring shackles. Um, it just, it's really endless. You know, loving the aesthetics. I truly don't think there's a bad angle of the vehicle. That's my honest initial impression. Um, I know there's mixed reviews on these anchor points here. They're obviously for trail markers as well as cables to be able to tie down uh, tents and whatnot on the roof and other accessories uh, for camping and skiing and so on and so forth. Moving on to the wheels, the rims, the tires. Uh, it has a great stance with the Sasquatch. It comes with roughly a 35 inch tire, 17 inch wheel. And you know, I feel finally for once Ford got it right with an option. It's a good looking wheel from the factory. Um, full disclosure, we are in the process of replacing these rims. Uh, we're going to go team up with a local company. There will be a full review on those wheels coming out shortly. Should have those on in the next month or so. Uh, you get the Badlands badging on the side with the staff squash. That's nice. You know, it's, it's a marker and identification to let everyone know that, you know, what you have as a vehicle. I know it sits higher as a Badlands than uh, something that wouldn't have the Sasquatch package, so to speak. We have the rock guards, which are great, aesthetically pleasing. They hide the sill, which is nice. Uh, no one wants to see that and those mounting points, as well as they function. You know, they are a rock guard, hence their name. They will work well. They kind of look almost like a tucked um, running board, if you will, like an amp research running board. Mirrors pop in and out. They are not electric. Uh, this is obviously in a car wash if you're in trails or whatever and you're hitting something, you don't actually break them. They move, rel they rel move relatively easily. You have an accessory ready point here within the stanchion of the mirror. You have an accessory ready point at the top of the A-pillar where it cross members on the windshield at the top. That's nice. Um, they've dropped more Easter eggs in. Established 1966, Bronco in the windshield, which I think is a nice little touch. You know, moving on to the back, you know, if you're looking at the side profile, right, the quarter panel, um, I think this vehicle, like I stated, doesn't have a bad angle to it, in my honest opinion. 
did a really nice job with the side, the rear, the front. Uh, it has a great stance. I think from the factory, the rims and tires have a great tracking point, how wide they sit out. Uh, the fender flares, that's another, you know, another thought. Not crazy about those. I think they do sit out a little bit too far. Uh, and I know they do have other options from Ford if you go with one of the other models where they don't stick out as far. And then obviously at this point, there's tons of aftermarket options for it, which we will be making something along those lines for an improvement. Spare tire on the back, camera coming through the tire, which is really nice. Uh, you don't have any uh, you know, intrusion, so to speak, of potentially putting it up here where the third brake light is or down there and it's mounted to the ground. It, is, it does stick out obviously to an extent and it needs to do that. So you obviously don't catch any of the rim and the tire and the tracking little bit of an eyesore but again it's black so it blends in not that big of a deal in my opinion at the end of the day nice job with the chrome horse on the back uh, nice angle looks great uh, these hinges here obviously I'm not crazy about the way that they were finished from Ford maybe it was just an oversight you know they have a ton of orange peel in them they, they it was a process probably the type of material they used cast style material I know that they don't go through and obviously hand buff and polish these as they're mass produced these vehicles. So the porous type material that that was made out of, you can obviously see it resonate through. Not crazy or in love with that, but again, it's minor stuff. Brake lights are beautiful. Um, I think they have a really nice look to them. I think they paid a lot of respect to the old Bronco from the 60s. They just did a really nice job overall with the aesthetics of the vehicle. The C pillar in the back, the way it drops off, it's beautiful. Nice scratch courtesy of Ford already when they were putting the top on in production. We'll get that touched up. I think what's really cool is they set the speakers inside of the cage, which is pretty dope. It doesn't have anything to do with the soft top, anything to do with the hard top. Uh, it's proprietary. This does have the Bang & Olufsen uh, sound system. Pretty cool. Ton of cargo space. I will tell you the hydraulic arm is pretty heavy. You do get to a certain point though, and it kind of takes over on its own. It does go past 90, it goes to probably about 130, 120, 130 degrees, which is nice because if you need to bring anything in and out, you don't have this door that's hanging out at you know 85 or 90 degrees and you're catching right here. So they did a nice job with that. Nice hydraulic gas-filled strut, um, or gas-filled strut rather. It does a really good job of keeping it open. Obviously it's brand new. Decent amount of storage. We got our camera gear here today. Um, it's, we went with the Lux package, which is the marine grade vinyl interior. Uh, kind of skeptical about it until I saw it in person. A little storage door there. You have anchor points here. Uh, 12 volt hookup in the back. Car charger, cigarette lighter, what have you. Um, it's just really nice. It's just complete. It's finished. It's just a nice amount of storage. Obviously, there's not a third row. This is the four door. Um, I like it. I super clean. You know, it's. It's that vinyl type of uh, interior where, you know, you can hose it out. Um, this probably will scratch up over time. It is what it is. You know, we buy these things because we're going to be rugged with them and we're going to take them off road and whatnot. You know, it feels stout. It feels solid. The door's got some nice weight to it. it feels stout when you close it. It doesn't feel hollow. So back bumper, you know, um, plastic covered, probably metal on the inside. They put the license plate frame off to the left side. It's okay, they needed obviously a place for the hitch in the center. Probably impartial to that. It's nice that it's inset at least, I give it that. It's got its own nice little cubby. Backup sensors are kind of um, unobtrusive, fine. Not crazy about this here. You know, it was probably done for aesthetics. Uh, that's just a personal opinion. So moving on to the interior. You know, when we saw this recently for the first time and we were actually able to put our hands on the seats, we were able to feel the material, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. You know, they're not only do they look nice, they're actually really comfortable to sit in. Um, it's a really nice upgrade for OEM. I love the orange or yellow piping, depending on how you view it. Uh, it's got a little bit of an orangish, yellowish tint. Everything is rubberized in the interior. You know, the oh shit handles or oh crap handles. Um, you know, I like how they're not on the A pillar. They're not in your, your viewing scene, so they're not an eyesore as you're essentially driving down the road. Makes it relatively easy if you wanna climb in and out. And you know, being a Badlands Sasquatch, it's actually pretty high. Uh, like I said, we're on 35s, roughly it's a millimeter size, so it's a metric equivalent to it. We don't have any type of um, alternate or additional running board to step up. 
So you need to be aware as you step up, you know, be mindful. Obviously you don't want to scratch your sill. Stay tuned, we got something coming for that. So to protect those. Um, initial thoughts, sitting in the seat, super comfortable. Uh, there's a ton of bolster activity going on. They tuck you in nice and tight. You don't feel like you're dancing around. Um, I wouldn't say it's like equivalent to the seats in my Shelby GT350R where the bolsters are nice and tight and the Recaro's, but it's also not the other end of the spectrum where there's no protection whatsoever. Uh, you do sit in quite nice and you feel protected. And this material is actually really nice. Uh, buyer beware, top completely off in the sunlight over the heat. These will probably get exceptionally hot. Um, really nice dark shadow gray accents throughout the dash not crazy about the light gray on that i don't know if it was an option i don't think it was an option in the badlands i think in the wild track of the big bend or the first edition or some of the other ones you can get black or dark shadow gray we would have opted to go dark all overall again that's personal preference uh, just initial impressions i like the layout of the interior i will tell you it feels bigger when you're in it than it actually is as a vehicle uh, you don't feel like you know if your elbows here I'm, I'm 5'11", about 190. Uh, Ryan, our camera guy, he's about 6'1". So the two of us to drive over to the spot to film this, um, we're not fighting for elbow space. And we all know what that's like when you're in a narrow vehicle. Not Doesn't track quite as wide as my 2016 F-150, uh, but it's definitely wider than a Ranger. So they did a really nice job with that. You have a ton of headroom when you're inside, top on or top off. I think they did a nice job with that. You're very high up. It's easy to track and see the fall off of the edge of the, uh, of the hood, but at the same time, you don't feel like you're sitting down too low where you're sitting in a bathtub. Uh, just really nice job overall. A lot of headroom, as I stated. Auxiliary switches. So this is obviously put here uh, for your wiring, for your ready hookup, for your lights, for your winches, uh, for all the things that you wanna add, you know, and you have, you have six auxiliary hookups. Uh, this is all rubberized and coated. Everything is rubberized and coated. You know, they state that you could basically hose this out. You could go mudding, you could hose this out. I know there's guys that have done reviews on that. I personally would not take a garden hose to the inside of this. I would just be afraid that something's gonna get in the cracks of the, of the you know, this beautiful monitor, this display we have here, but they say you can. So I'll go ahead and I'll kick this on. This is the fun part. So this screen is enormous. Uh, it's almost like driving a Tesla. They did an amazing job with it. They put, they integrated everything into the screen um, as they, you know, as you know, if you already have the sync system and this is the newest version of whatever they offer. Um, I like how they left the climate controls separate though. Um, I will tell you on my F-150, I have them in both places and I find myself more often than not using the manual controls down underneath the touch screen. So that's really clean. Uh, the screen is so large you have the ability to either run full-time nav with a modified um, smaller version of you know whatever else you have as an accessory right now we have it on the radio or vice versa if you go to audio it flips so you obviously have that in two-thirds of your screen or three-quarters of your screen you have a much smaller navigation just more yellow accents orange accents they did a nice job you know the the, the broncos inset here uh, the horses and the steering wheel i'll move over to there in a second we have our GOAT modes. Um, I think what's really cool, moving on to the window switches and the mirror switches, is that with the exception of your door lock and unlock, you have everything at your disposal in the center, which makes sense because you can unbolt the, the doors from two bolts, one cannon plug, they pop out, um, and then they're out of the way. If you obviously wanna go mudding, you wanna go to the beach, and you don't wanna have the doors on the vehicle. Um, so you still have your full window functionality, which again is irrelevant if the doors are off the vehicle, but again, it's there. So I thought that was cool to put it there. Center console's fairly small, not crazy about it, pretty much useless. You're not gonna really do too much with it. So it's probably about six by seven and probably about eight, nine inches deep. Glove box is fairly decent size. Good to go there. Um, I don't put much emphasis on that. Uh, you do have a wireless charger here, which is really cool. I saw this recently in another brand vehicle and I thought it was pretty cool. So you just take your phone and I have an iPhone 13 Pro, uh, 12 Pro Max. So the biggest one at that time and it fits and it will charge. 
I don't know if it acted, there it goes. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. You're not plugging in. And I am told that um, you can go wireless Apple CarPlay with this as well, which is a really cool feature. So cup holders uh, in a decent spot. Shifters in a great spot. It's pretty ergonomic. Everything feels like it has a nice home. It has a cockpit style feel to it. You get this beautiful branding badge from Ford. Um, it's stamped. It's got the two nice rivets in it. Talks about built at the Michigan assembly plant, designed and engineered Ford. That's always great. Built and manufactured and, and, and assembled in America. Being an American made product, we love that. Uh, been a Ford guy for a very, very long time. and. I take a lot of pride in owning my vehicles and knowing that they're made here. Nothing to say there's anything wrong with the JDM or the Euro stuff. It's truly amazing. I've had all those cars as well. Just if I'm buying American, I want to know I'm buying American. Um, so I want to see if there's anything else really in the interior on my initial impressions. Uh, yeah, you know, the, um, the visors tuck up nice and high. They tuck up in the pillars. Um, you know, sometimes on other vehicles, they're kind of like a like an eyesore hanging down a little bit everything kind of has its home you know um i don't know what we have going on here i haven't been able to dive into this yet you know we've only had this now i think as i stated earlier five or six days we have less than 200 miles on it and we've already started scanning things for parts and whatnot i will tell you um i am a hydro flask guy i have a 32 ounce hydro flask i drink about a gallon and a half water a day and one of my biggest gripes with vehicles is the cup holders aren't big enough for the hydro flasks you know and in this day and age in the world we're living in, in terms of uh, staying in shape and exercising and being active, and especially when you're buying this vehicle if you're active, most likely, right? You're going camping, you're going to the beach and whatnot. So they do give you this netting with the elastic. It is able to fit there. So that's kind of cool. It is a little bit of a workaround. Um, it's better than having nothing. So on my F-150, I kind of have to lay it lengthwise along the cup holders. It's a little annoying. I take a turn a little too hard, then goes flying across the floor. So I'm not thrilled about that. So, initial, impression, initial impressions part one. Um, I think it's a beautiful vehicle. I would say I give it an overall score of probably an A minus. Um, and how I'm grading that is performance, uh, which I'm gonna discuss in a second, um, aesthetics, drivability, functionality, uh, ergonomic layout of things. Uh, I've owned about 22, 24 vehicles in my entire life. And you know, we as Fast Intentions, we're an exhaust manufacturer and we pretty much modify everything that we've ever bought or owned. And this vehicle is a dedicated shop vehicle to manufacture parts for advertisement purposes, for innovation, for design, to go out, to rep the company, to create uh, improved products for this specific platform. Um, got a lot coming. I really don't want to disclose too much right off the bat but there's gonna be a tons of improvements that we have for this vehicle. Some things that we wanted to make prior to seeing the vehicle, and then other things that are kind of on the dream board as the vehicles arrived, and we said, okay, look at that, we can make some improvements. Uh, we're currently working on, we probably have about seven or eight different products that are in the actual pipeline right now. So stay tuned for those, those are gonna be coming soon. So from a performance standpoint, um, this Badland Sasquatch comes with the 2.7 liter twin turbo EcoBoost. Um, it's getting annoying, let's turn that off. So, thoughts on that, you know, I've had a 3.5 liter EcoBoost, in my F-150 now going on five years. We also have a 2020 Raptor with the high output 3.5 liter. Uh, I was kind of disappointed when we heard 2.7 liter in this vehicle. It was obviously gonna be the largest engine that was gonna be available. Um, aesthetically, it's not pleasing at all. You look at it, there's wires everywhere. There's no intake manifold cover. Uh, there's no symmetry to it. It just looks like a jumbled spaghetti bowl mess. Um, tons of room for improvement. Again, thank you, Ford. You know, you've left us plenty of opportunity to improve in a plethora of places under the hood as well as in the exhaust system uh, to come out with a ton of different variations of stuff. That said, uh, I am pleasantly surprised with the performance and the takeoff, the torque, the mid-range and top end power of the 2.7 liter. Uh, it actually does have a little bit of get up and go. Um, sound wise, it actually sounds very, very choked off. It sounds like I'm driving a vacuum cleaner. Um, it just, it's not so much tire noise. You know, I've been driving a vehicle on 35 inch tires now for five years. So I'm not getting that wah, wah, wah. It's more of that, um, it's more of like, help me, I'm trying to breathe. I'm taking an air, but it's not going anywhere. 
is the best way to describe it in my honest opinion. So it definitely needs an air induction system. It probably could benefit from some sort of an upgraded tune, uh, cold air box, upgraded intercooler tubing, upgraded intercooler, obviously upgraded exhaust system. That's what we're working on. That's what we specialize in and have for the past 20 years. Um, so being biased, not crazy a fan of the 2.7 when you think about it on paper, but the way it physically performs, butt in the seat, I'm actually pleasantly surprised and I know there's room for improvement. Aesthetics, not crazy about it. Personal opinion. Um, I know there's gonna be a mixed review here in terms of you're gonna get your mall crawler crowd. They're gonna want it to aesthetically look pleasing under the hood. You're gonna get your weekend warriors that are gonna take it to the desert. I'm probably gonna fit somewhere in there personally. And then you're gonna get your hardcore crowd that's not gonna give a shit in terms of what it's gonna look like under the hood. They're gonna to wanna to know how this thing's gonna perform and only how it performs. And it's literally function over form. So our goal, our objective as a company is to develop products that appeal to everyone across the spectrum. Um, and we don't wanna leave anyone behind, right? So we wanna take care of everyone. Um, and we all fall somewhere. Like I said, I fall in the mall crawler to the weekend warrior. Oh, I got a scratch on it. You know, let me get it buffed out. But as I start to jump this thing, as we start to do things with it, as we start to do more, and once that honeymoon stage, that newness wears off, we all know how it goes. It, uh, you just really start to enjoy it for what it is versus how it looks. So um, that's a little bit on the performance. I haven't really been able to dive into the GOAT modes. Uh, that's gonna be coming on Initial Impressions Part 2, the off-roading of it, um, what we think in terms of how it actually performs in terms of handling, disconnecting the sway bar, that kind of stuff. So um, that's what I got for you today. 186 miles in, that's my initial impression of it. Um, again, I said overall about an A minus and everyone's gonna be biased, right? We're gonna get after this again. We're gonna do an initial impressions part two. Uh, like, subscribe, share this information. If you have any comments, please share them. If you have any questions, share them. We have the vehicle. We know a lot of people are still waiting on this. I know there was several thousands, tens of thousands pre-ordered, and I know that Ford to date has uh, only delivered a small hand few, a few uh, small few. So hit us up if you have any questions, or if you'd like us to review something specifically, or you have one on order, and you want us to dive into something and maybe give you a little bit of feedback, uh, we have it here, so we're willing to do that. And um, appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.